Larry Joe, you have to do it within the hour or this plan will never work. You don't ask for too much, do you? Hey, if our life together means anything to you, Larry Joe, you'll find a way. Now, don't forget. And before Diane leaves for the hospital. Words I used to pray Thoughts I'd never say I will say to you found this handkerchief of Heather's in Larry Joe's room. Yes. I'm sorry, Jeff, but it's true. Right next to his bed. Well, he probably stole it, that's all. I doubt that somehow. Well, I don't. Susan, Larry Joe has been hanging around Heather ever since he came back to Port Charles. He seems to think that just because he used to be married to her, he has some kind of prior rights. It may not be his fault that he feels that way, Jeff. I told you before, I have been watching Heather lead him on for months now. Well, that I don't believe for a second. Now, she can't stand him. She's told me. And I've told you, Heather is very secretive. She always has been. I just feel sorry for Larry Joe, because I know she doesn't care about him at all. She's just using him. Well, I don't feel sorry for Larry Joe. You know, I may not be able to find the truth out about this, but I sure can check out your story that Heather pawned my mother's locket. Where are you going? Going back to the apartment. I'm going to look in Heather's jewelry box where she keeps that locket. Jeff, I'm sorry. Believe me, I didn't tell you all these things to hurt you. And why did you, Susan? Because I like you. I like you a lot. I always have. And I can't stand to see Heather using you like she's used everyone else her whole life. Those are pretty strong words, Susan. I hope you realize that if that locket is there, that our friendship is over. Our friendship means a great deal to me, Jeff. That's why I'd never lie about anything like this. Well, we'll see. It took me a long time, Heather, but I think I'm finally getting my revenge. Hey, Hank. It was great of you to get me this LSD so fast. Hey, Larry Joe, I was glad to do it, but look, just call it stuff, okay? You never know who's listening. Oh, sure, uh, stuff. But anyway, I appreciated it. Well, you said you needed it in a hurry. Well, it's kind of an emergency. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, I know this is none of my business, but um, how come you're suddenly so eager to take a trip? I mean, I could have gotten you all you wanted all along, but you are never interested before. Well, this gal I've been dating, she wanted to try some tonight, you know, so I thought, what the heck, I'll give it a try, too. 
What, what do I owe you? Ten bucks. Uh, uh, just got it. Uh, you do me a favor? Sure. Don't mention this to anybody about me buying this stuff off you, all right? <laughs> You're really green about this, aren't you? What's so funny? <laughs> well, I'm the one I ought to be telling you to keep your mouth shut instead of vice versa. You know, I could get put away for this. Hey, you don't have to worry about that, Hank. I mean, no one's going to know about this. I can guarantee you that my girl and I... Good. Oh, oh, oh. Um, we've never done this stuff before. How much do we take? Well, since your first time, uh, there's enough there for both of you. But look, if you need any more, just let me know. Uh, don't worry, I'm getting out of this town, but fast. Well, good luck then. Thanks again, all right? Well, I got it for you, Heather, just to prove how much I love you. Joe, you better have one hell of a good explanation for frightening Heather the way you did in the park this morning. I do, Peter. You know, for your information, Diana doesn't want to see you again, and I'm feeling pretty much the same way. So, if I could have an itemized statement... Peter, if you would, you... just hear me out, please. I can understand you're being angry, but if you just sit down for a couple of minutes, I think I can clear everything up. You know, I don't care what your explanation is. There is no excuse for a sadistic trick like that. You know how much Heather loves our son and the pretend the kidnapping... I might... know how much she loves him, very much, too much, and that's the core of the problem here. Well, what problem are we talking about? Peter, you told me yourself. Heather's love for PJ was so obsessive, you once had to replace her because of it. Yes, but that was a long time ago, right after she got back from New York and still hadn't gotten over losing her son. But she's resolved those problems. I don't think she has resolved it, Peter. And since she had that miscarriage in the winter, I think her love for PJ is more obsessive than ever. Don't you think you're being a little presumptuous to be diagnosing Heather's emotional condition for me? I'm a psychiatrist, remember? And I've seen nothing obsessive in Heather's attitude toward P.J. lately. But I also think she's very good at hiding her feelings. Because she knows you'll replace her again if you spot them. That's why she undermined Maggie, so she could have her old job back. But what does this have to do with that lousy trick you played on Heather this morning? I played two tricks on Heather this morning, and I had very good reasons for both of them. Two? I don't suppose Heather mentioned the first one to Diana. Joe, you better get to the point, because I'm getting angry as this goes on. Peter, please, All right, here please it is. listen to him. I called Heather at your house this morning, pretending to be the man that's been calling Diana. Would you, you like to what? know what her response was to this? What? She asked me if I were Larry Joe trying to be funny, because to her, this was all deadly serious business. Peter, I know that this is going to come as quite a shock to you. But I'm certain now that because of her neurotic need to have your son for herself. Heather is the one who has been torturing Diana all these months. but I couldn't mention anything to you or Diana until I had the proof to back it up. You have that proof now? I do. Please sit down. All right. This is a copy of Heather's fingerprints from her employment record at the hospital. This is a copy of fingerprints I took off the master recording device installed in your basement. Yeah, but there could be a good reason for no, that. No, no, I haven't finished yet. Here is a lab report proving conclusively that segments of the tape in the basement were erased. This accounts for the blank spaces between the conversations. Y you think Heather made those erasures? Not necessarily. I know she had help. This is another set of prints that were taken off that machine in the basement. Well, whose are these? Larry Joe Baker's. Larry Joe? He's been in it all along from the beginning. Right with Heather. That's why he's been over at your house so often. Do you remember me asking you why Heather was spending so much time with her ex-husband? Yes, yes, I do, Joe. Let me ask you something now that you have this information. All right, what is it? Do you remember when you intercepted the phone call that Diana was supposed to get here at the hospital? You said you thought you recognized something in the vo vocal quality. You didn't know what it was. Thinking back on that now, could it have been Larry Joe's voice you heard? 
Yes, now that you mention it, I could almost swear it was Larry Joe's voice. I mean, it was disguised, of course, but it had that, that drawl that Diana detected. Well, I, I guess it all fits together. I, I, I'm just having a hard time accepting it. It also explains why Heather would call Diana and say she was taking PJ to the park. But when I get to the house 20 minutes later, she was still there talking to Larry Joe, and PJ was asleep in the nursery. Now, for your wife's lapses in memory, Ann, would you please tell him about Spence Andrews' medication? Uh, <clears throat> Peter, the day that Diana thought she gave Mr. Andrews the wrong medication was the same day that Heather brought PJ in for a checkup at the hospital. Yes, I remember that. Well, I noticed that Heather was following Diana all over the seventh floor that day. And, uh, she even went into the medicine room. I walked into the medicine room at the same moment that Diana stepped outside to put her tray on the cart, and Heather was in there alone. A few minutes later, she went into Spence Andrew's room, and she made up some foolish excuse for being there. And that's when I noticed the extra pill in the medicine cup. So I went to Joe, and I told him, and that's when he told me that he already suspected Heather of being behind the problems. I, I, the evidence seems to be conclusive. I just can't believe it. I mean, she's so close to Diana. Now, listen to this. This is a conversation, part of a conversation that I had this morning in the park while Heather thought the baby was kidnapped. He hasn't been kidnapped, I'm telling you. And the longer we stand here and talk about it, the further away PG is going to be. It's pointless to go on looking for him until this man contacts us. Nobody's going to contact us. There was never any man on the other side of the lake. I just made him up to scare Di... You made him up to scare Diane and to throw me off the track? Is that what you were going to say, Heather? That's it. That's... That's conclusive proof, a confession. Hello? Hello there, Heather. Susan, I've got nothing more to say to you. I said it all earlier at the drugstore, and my opinion of you hasn't changed since then. Remember I told you you were going to be sorry someday for all the things you've done to me? You really scared me, too. If you had any sense at all, you would be scared, because I've started things in motion, and they're going according to plan right this minute. You don't frighten me in the least, Susan. Now that I've got the muddy slacks and the pawn ticket, well, you've got no proof of anything. Wrong, cousin. I got proof of things you don't even know about. What things? Oh, you'll find out very soon. And instead of you having a surprise for Jeff tonight, he's going to have one for you. And it's a beaut. I just wish I were going to be there to see your reaction to it all. Have a nice day, Heather, because you got one heck of a night ahead of you. <sighs> Heather? Are you all right? Yes, Diana. Oh, you didn't get another one of those phone calls while I, while I was in the shower, did you? No. Why would you think that? Just by the way you look. And I'm probably still thinking about that ugly trick that Joe and Ann played on you today, huh? Yeah. Look, why don't you go in and take a nice cool shower like I did? It's so refreshing. It'll help you get your mind off of all of that. I just can't stop thinking about it, Diana. I'll never understand people being mean for no reason. I know, I know. But if it makes you feel any better at all, I'm sure that Peter has fired Joe, and as soon as I get to the hospital, I'm going to find Audrey, and I'm going to tell her all about Anne's part in this. Thanks, okay. Diana. Yeah. So, why don't I go in and uh, dry my hair a little bit and get dressed, and um, we'll both have lunch before I go off to Dr. Elliot's. I made a perfect July lunch. I've got chilled vegetables and dip and iced tea. Oh, I'll get it. Oh. I got it, Heather. Hi, Larry Joe. 